Hi everyone. This is Linda from Lolly Lens and I'd like to cover in this photo tutorial of how to create your very own uh, Art Deco doll if you maybe wanted to try it but didn't know where to start. So if uh, thought if I could cover some of the uh, highlights in the video that it would help you uh, in deciding where to start. So in, in the beginning here we are going to select various fabrics to cut out our pattern pieces. The pattern can be purchased from my Etsy shop at uh, etsy.com backslash shop backslash lolly lens so that'll offer you um, PDF uh, two PDFs written instruction along with uh, the pattern cutout so but you can use various fabrics the one I've I've selected some recycled clothes uh, that my daughter had and I had laying around um, so this is one of her shirts that uh, I'm using to make the flounce uh, which is a little skirt over over a skirt so uh, doing that and then uh, in the second part of the shirt there is a um, a knitted weave that I'll use for the top bodice and it'll go around the over over the top of the uh, portion of the dress of the deco doll How you design your uh, deco doll is entirely up to you. Uh, combining the the fun of this doll is that you can take any fabric, texture, color, or uh, print, and uh, put it all together. It's, it's just creating something that is entirely unique to you, that and totally expressive of who you are uh, in creating something special. On this particular piece of fabric uh, you'll notice the piping around the armhole in the neck area and so after I cut this off uh, the shirt I'll then trim it down and taking off the the piping around the neck and the arm. At this point, we're just cutting out the fabric, so I'm not cutting anything of the pattern so far and making sure that uh, my pieces fit the pattern size and uh, making sure the fabrics are cleaned and free of um, any trims or unwanted things that I don't want on my doll. So the piping happens to be one that I don't find necessary. Uh, later on I end up surging the ends to keep them from fraying and uh, and then finally during the assembly I sew it directly onto the onto the top of the dowel. Selecting your fabrics can take some time. I kept notes as to which fabric I wanted to go with which piece and I would trim the uh, pattern, I'd cut out the pattern and just pin it to the square of the fabric that I had cut so I knew which piece went to which fabric so that when I went to sew it I would have it all lined up together. Once you've decided on your fabrics some of the pieces you may decide to have more than one fabric sewn together so for instance I have the arm here so I've taken my muslin which I applied to the hand of the arm and then I take the fabric piece that I want for the clothing and apply that over the arm to determine at which length I want to cover the arm width and how much of the hand I want exposed. So um, 
and cutting out your pattern. I didn't do that in this piece or in, in my pieces, but before you cut, sew your fabrics together that you want to join together and then take your um, take your pattern piece and you can cut out the entire uh, length of your two patterns together join them as one and then cut it out as a single fabric rather than two separate pieces it makes it a little bit easier here I didn't do that I cut two separate pieces so but that's it. I explained that a little better in the uh, written instruction which when you purchase the pattern you'll you'll receive that but again you know you can do it either way though there's there's no right or wrong to it on this piece as well I'm doing two separate fabrics and again uh, in doing so cut the size you want join your fabrics together first then put your pattern piece on top and cut your pattern out onto a single piece of fabric rather than two separate fabrics. For the shoe in the leg I have three separate fabrics and I have the uh, black stretch jean denim material that I'm using for the shoe and I have the muslin for the leg and a jersey knit for stockings that go over the top of the leg. So I take my black and I cut a piece of, I fold it in half and cut two for the shoe. Then I have my jersey knit which I use for the stocking and I cut two per leg. Um, so remember there are two legs and there are four sides total. Uh, so there's two sides per leg. Now I have my muslin and I'll be cutting out the rest of the leg on that. Cutting four pieces total two per leg. Um, so what you could do is take your black and your leg portion, sew that fabric together and you can cut the leg and shoe in one piece and then anything additional you will cut separate. Before I start sewing the pattern together I make sure that I mark all my fabrics so that I know which fabric goes to which piece and everything is lined up so that it makes it easier to sew together. Here we are joining the uh, skirt and the top. Note, uh, remember the top I had sewn two fabrics together. The skirt is solid. It's a solid pattern but it's it's one piece of fabric. So I'll be joining the uh, top and the bottom skirt together. Then I take the muslin that I have uh, for the head and I cut the fabric out for the head to be sewn to the skirt, the top. It will join them together. Once you've joined the head with the skirt and the top um, take one side of your doll to construct your face. Um, so here's where you get really creative in picking out your eyes and deciding how you want your face to be. So I used uh, paper for the base of the eye I use cloth for the eyelids and I want to sew the paper onto the fabric and you'll do this before you sew 
your two sides together. Uh, so on your face, which when you're using buttons and things like that, uh, it makes it easier to sew them on. So I have paper for the base of the eye, uh, cloth for the eyelid, and a button for the um, for the eye itself, for the color portion of the eye. So you need to select your buttons and whatever you need for your notions uh, to apply to your face. If you're face painting, you can either do it before or after uh, you you assemble your doll. But any if you're sewing small pieces, then you might want to apply them before you sew the piece together before stuffing. Here I show the eyes uh, lined up and next we will sew the two pieces together making sure that your right sides are together uh, on one side of this uh, at the opposite side of the head I leave a portion of that open so that when I turn it right side out that I do the head first so it doesn't interfere with the face and it I, uh, doesn't get snagged up on anything and you're able to do it smoothly just being extra cautious make sure you um, trim your corners you notch your corners and go around your your circle for your head and make sure you notch it out to make that uh, seam fabric fold easily and give it a better shape when you're all done sewing then you'll stuff uh, stuffing firmly on the head and the arms and legs you stuff firmly at the ends and through your arm and leg then you want to spread it out now we have the assembly we have the shoes with the little buttons the stockings the legs the bottom skirt the flounce the top the bodice portion the arms I added a bead necklace we have the face we've got the eyes with false eyelashes um, hair be creative you can use ribbon scraps of uh, material yarn whatever you can think of and then she's all yours and she's wild and carefree and eccentric and just like a lot of us are and uh, be your best friend so I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching. Bye.